Hi everybody. This is your little aftercare video for our Qigong Basics micro retreat. I'm going to start this little session just quickly going over our stance practice and then I'll run through about a half hour multi-element session for you. You always want to remember that your legs are the foundation of your body and as such we're literally trying to sink or allow the weight to melt into the lower half of the body. We really take our time with every form that we do. This is a part of the day where you're not rushing. We're really bringing the attention back into the body and allowing our awareness to settle. We're moving out of the mind and into this now moment. Your feet will always be straight out in front of you unless we're in a split stance. This helps to anchor the lower half of the body. And your feet, knees, and hips are generally in alignment. It's as though someone just comes along and tugs at the back of your shirt and this will draw your tailbone down to the earth, really anchoring you through this area of the body. When we stand with the feet together, this is known as bamboo in the wind, and all the same elements apply for this posture. We're also softening through the chest, allowing the shoulders to relax and be at ease. And you always want to make sure the crown of your head is aligned with the heavens. It's said in Taoism that humans are the conduit between heaven and earth. And as such, we're channeling sky chi or yang chi in through the crown chakra. And we're pulling up earth energy through the feet. This is bamboo in the wind. To move into Wuji, which is the basic stance that we'll use for most of the forms, we just place all the weight on the right leg, lift the left heel, and step out to the left. Same principles apply. Feet, knees, hips in alignment, and your feet are about shoulder width apart for this posture. Shoulders are soft. I always find it helpful to take a breath in through the nose and out through the mouth. This is like taking the lid off a boiling pot of water and allowing steam or tension out of the body. Automatically, you'll find the shoulders will soften and relax and the whole body kind of just sinks down a little bit. This is this practice of Sung Gong that we've been talking about during the session of really softening and anchoring your Qi. If we were to move into Mabu or horse stance, you can place the heel inside the arch of one foot and we're doing three foot widths wide, pivoting on the ball of the foot to come into this wider stance, Mabu or horse stance. When we move into a split stance, we start in Wuji, same principles apply. Lift up the left heel and we're gonna step one foot length forward and then you're just gonna pivot on the heel so your back foot is out at about 45 degrees. My knees are still soft and we're going to employ the slide and glide principle for this form. I'm never loading up my knee with weight. The weight remains in the heel and we push off the front foot to come into the weight in the heel on the back foot. This gives you a nice slide and glide forward and backwards. And obviously it's the same whether it's the right or the left foot forward. Let's begin our little Qigong session.
Remembering that your joints are gateways or portals for energy. And we start by inviting the energy to come back into the body. Turn your palms out. Breathe in and slowly, keeping the shoulders soft. Raise the arms up overhead. Fold the fingertips towards each other. And release the energy down through the body. Everything around us is alive. That's why I love to practice outside. I'm getting energy from the rocks and the sun, from the beautiful yin of the ocean. As I'm standing here, I'm calling all of my energy and my spirit back to me. Where might some of your essence become entangled today, over a week, or a lifetime. Call yourself back to yourself. These practices bring us back to a sense of wholeness, completeness, purity, and cleansing. When you've done your three opening of the gates, we're gonna come back to Wuji Elbows are slightly bent and tilted just ever so slightly forward. You'll find this will open up space under your arms. Standing in this posture is like being a sail on a sailboat open to catch all of the chi around us. This Jean Juan stance, these are the most potent of all of the Qigong forms. And they're also the most difficult just to stand in stillness, just to be in this moment, being okay with nothing happening but being and watching the beautiful birds around you. For many of the forms, we keep the bottom half of the body anchored. This doesn't mean we're locked. Our weight is just settled in the lower half of the body. We're going to begin one of our conditioning and regulating forms called knocking on the door of life. You're gonna use your arms to helicopter and swing from side to side. You'll notice my hips aren't really moving. I'm using the upper half of the body. I'm really moving in through the waist for this form. Really nice practice for opening up. And one hand taps on either side of the spine as the hands move from side to side. You wanna make sure you're not tapping on the spine itself. And at the front of the body, the hands are moving either side of the hips. The door of life is also known as Mingmen in acupuncture and Chinese medicine. It's right opposite the belly button on the back of your body. This is associated with the kidneys, which are the batteries of your body that regulate your energy and your essence over a day, a week, or a lifetime. With this form, you can also turn to look over your shoulder Nice little practice for opening up through the neck. And you'll feel your energy starting to move through the body. As you'll remember from our little practice, Qigong self-massage is a great way to open up the gateways and the meridians in the body. And that's exactly what we're doing while we're turning at the waist and tapping. When you're ready, we're just going to start to slow this right down. I'm just letting my arms come to a stop when they're ready. And come back to Sung Gong. You may feel a nice little buzzing through your body. This is energy being released and dispersed. When you feel ready, make sure your head is aligned with the heavens 
And it's as though we're just going to bring the ear to the shoulder as close as you can. Try not to lift up the opposite shoulder as you lean over. I find what's helpful is to place my attention in rooting this foot into the ground. And then just lean and place your ear in the direction of your shoulder. And excuse me for squinting, I've got the setting sun right in my eyes. Breathe in and come back up to center. And then we'll breathe out and we'll release through the other side of the neck. This is a nice little practice if you've been working at your desk or on your phone. The neck takes a lot of pressure and a lot of stress. And it's also the gateway between the head and the heart. Your throat is actually known as the celestial chimney. And if you think about a chimney, we want to keep it open and free of debris. For our next posture, we're going to tuck the chin to the chest. You're breathing out here and just feeling the whole back of the neck expanding and opening up. Then you're going to draw your chin down and it's as though you're drawing a circle or a half circle rather with your chin. Your head will come back into position and then we'll circle back down. Your arms are just nice and relaxed by your sides, knees slightly bent. This is a really beautiful practice for opening up through the back of the neck without compressing the atlas or the axis, which can be quite sensitive chin to chest then you're going to breathe in and draw your head up you're going to lift up your chin and we're going to go the other way drawing down coming back in and up and around just making this half circle with the neck to really open up through those joints let all your movements be slow and soft and purposeful. When you find yourself back up to center, just realign and reposition your body. We're going to turn one palm out, breathe in, raise your arm up overhead. Shoulders are soft. And it's as though someone's got you by the wrist. This arm is going to remain up. You'll look over your other shoulder and just allow yourself to dangle down. Really feeling that stretch through the lateral sides of the body, through the side of the neck. And when you're ready, breathe yourself back in use your thumb as a guide and pull your hand down through the center of the body this is a nice stretch really good for the liver meridians and as the hand comes down it's a beautiful way to bring your energy back into alignment turn your other arm out raise it up slowly maybe remember to keep your shoulders soft and then we're going to look over the other shoulder and dangle down on this side you may feel quite a difference from side to side i know that i do when you're ready breathe in and come back up and draw your hand down in front of the body. Next time, breathe in and raise your arms up. You'll notice my wrists are soft. Hands are going to cross in front of the body. You're going to raise them up and turn your palms to face each other. Shoulders are soft and it's as though your head just pokes through. We're gently going to lean from side to side. I'm just using the upper half of my body. 
The Leo Gong points or heart points in the palms are touching, so this is very good for your heart chi. And as we lean into the sides, we're also really working to clear and dredge the liver chi. And you may remember from our session that the liver, it's literally the place where we live. It's also the home of anger and resentment. So this is a nice way to release some frustration or tension. When you're ready, come back up to center. We're just going to release the palms and gently let them float down. Turn your palms back forward. Mine are just absolutely buzzing and tingling. Turn them back over. We're going to raise the arms up overhead really stretch, turn the hands forward, pulling down some yang chi from the sky and touching bai hui or crown chakra. Hands running down the back of the neck, down the sides of the body, and they're going to come to rest on the kidneys. Then we'll just open the palms and turn them out and we'll tap across the back. You're going to tap across the buttocks, the lower back, and come up as high as is comfortable without straining. And then we'll come back rubbing the kidneys. This is just a really nice way to bring some energy into the body. And when you're ready, we're going to take a breath in, breathe out, tuck the chin to the chest, Fold the upper half of the body over. Run the hands all the way down the back of the legs, along the outer edge of the feet. And we're just gonna hang out here. If this is too deep of a stretch, you can come up higher and just hold your elbows. And just really feel your whole lower back open and expand. When the spine is open and relaxed, the nervous system is so calm. We really get the fluid moving through the spine and open up all through the joints. Keep breathing. Let's take a deep breath in through the nose. Out through the mouth. This will really help to cleanse and clear the bottom half of the lungs. Then we're going to bend the knees a lot. Really push off with the base of the feet. Release the arms. Keep the chin tucked in. And push yourself back up to standing. Shoulders will roll back as we find ourselves back in Wuji. Next, we're going to do some clearing and opening for the hands, the elbows, and the wrists. Just gently draw your hands up in front of your body, and we're going to pull the fingers in one by one and place the thumbs on the outside of the index finger. Then we're going to peel the whole hands open again. You'll notice I'm trying to keep my wrists joined. Do you have heart points here for the pericardium or the sac around your heart? And when we keep the hands together, we're actually nourishing these meridian points for the heart. One of the things I love about these practices is that every single form is multi-purpose, multi-elemental. Just doing this with your hands, we're working the heart. Hands are messengers for your heart. They're how we express and create in this world. This helps to create new neural networks in the brain and assist with mental plasticity. On the next time you make your fists, 
We're just going to draw the hands into the heart, roll your knuckles together slightly, dip at the knees, and then circle the wrists out. So we're just coming down, out, and around. Really slow and gentle. We're circulating through the elbows and the wrists opening up these gateways, allowing the synovial fluids to run through the body to hydrate and lubricate all your joints. These are beautiful practices for helping to mitigate and sometimes even reverse the effects of arthritis, inflammation. Now we're going to pull the hands up and we're going to go back the other way. So the arms are going to come out. We're going to breathe in, roll the knuckles together and release. For myself, I always think of these upward and outward motions as I'm pulling up energy from my body and I'm allowing anything that no longer serves me to release through my joints and out into the atmosphere. One more round and then we're just going to let the hands open and come down by the sides. You should already be feeling somewhat more relaxed and we're still on our warm up. Bring your hands up to your hips and we're just going to circle through the hips. As you do this, really lean into the hip socket and allow the bum to stick out and then push the pelvis forward. We're making nice, big, wide circles. Really opening up through the hip joints. Our hips allow our legs to take great leaps forward. And metaphysically speaking, they also allow us to take quantum jumps or quantum leaps in our own lives. You'll often find with older people, hips tend to go as we become more rigid in the way that we do things and in our belief systems can get kind of stuck in routines and ruts. Come back to center and we're going to circle back the other way. Really allowing the body to open and rotate with ease. Never pushing yourself beyond what's comfortable, but working into these joints. Coming back to center, release the hands slow and soft by your side. We're going to lean into one leg, pick up the heel of the other foot, and you're just going to pivot on the ball of the foot, draw the knee in, and allow it to pivot out. It's really good for opening up through the qua or the region of the lymphatic system, as well as serving to wring out the foot. Our feet take an enormous amount of pressure throughout the day, and they're also the closest part of the body to the earth, who's considered to be our mother. Come back to center, and we'll place this foot back down and roll to the other side. We'll start again on this side. This is a nice way to also lubricate the knee joints. If you have problems with your knees, sometimes it can indicate having difficulty asking for assistance. Think of that saying that someone has to be on their knees before they'll accept help. Come back to center. Bring your 
opposite foot forward, one foot length. We're gonna lift up the heel again. And this time we're gonna press into the ball of the foot and we're gonna circle through the ankle. Try to keep your foot with as much contact with the earth as you can in the ball of the foot. Not only does this open up through the ankle, we're gonna go back the other way. It also places a nice pressure on the bubbling well or kidney one. Really good for the kidney chi. Also helping the mind to drop into the body. Good practices if you have trouble sleeping. Come back to center, we'll draw this foot back and we'll come up onto the other one and we'll circle through. Just really feeling your attention inside the body. How much of your life force do you have pouring out on other people? Go back the other way, situations and circumstances. We all have a certain amount of energy when we start the day and every time you send it out, you're depleting that account. These are nice ways to make a deposit in your energy. Bring this foot back and make sure your feet are back in position and we'll come back into Wuji. Take a step out into Mabu, a little bit wider stance and we're going to move through a full body stretch. We will have done this in the practice. This is called teacups. The idea is you're going to bend one arm up and bring it in. Don't forget about this hand. Try to keep it in your focus. And we're holding an imaginary teacup full of tea that we don't wish to spill. You're going to lean to one side and push this hand out as though you're making an offering. We're gonna to slide to the other side and come back and spiral the, head, the hand over the head and come back in through the side of the body. As we do this, we're literally gathering chi from around us, drawing it up over the head, leaning into the sides and scooping it up in and around into the kidneys. This is uh, pretty much everyone's favorite little practice. It's a really good one if you've been on a long drive or a flight. It's a wonderful way just to nourish your whole body. When this hand comes in, we'll bring the other hand up, we'll transfer the energy, we'll release the opposite hand by the side, and we'll start our round on this side. And again, you may find one side is a little bit more cooperative than the other. And we always start with our more dominant side. So when we come around to the next round, it can often feel a little cumbersome or clunky. These practices are great just for bringing balance and wholeness to the whole body. Really nice for the spine, working through the laterals of the body. And just keeping your whole being hydrated and lubricated. Bring this hand in and we'll let it come down. I'm gonna stay in Mabu Anchor the tailbone, 
keep the collarbones out and the chin at the level of the horizon. We're simply going to take one hand, place it atop the other, and turn to look over your shoulder. And we're going to come back to the other side and look over the other shoulder. We'll just keep doing this for a few rounds. This is a nice, gentle way to open up the spine. Nice little spinal twist. Everything is gentle, slow, soft and methodical. As with any of these forms, you can pick one, do it as many times as you like. Come back to center, tuck the chin to the chest, and draw yourself up. Cross the hands over the lower abdomen. You'll notice my knees are still slightly bent. And we're going to breathe in and pull the arms up, following the hands with your eyes. Then we're going to breathe out, bend at the knees, keep the tailbone tucked under, chin to chest. And we'll draw back up. It's as though we're making a great arc with the hands coming down, pulling in and coming back up and then releasing back down. This is a really nice form for your spine. It's called full body flow. Honor your breathing, but generally we're gonna breathe out as we come down and breathe in as we come up. On this last round, coming up and just allow your hands to gently float back down. And I do apologize for the people in behind me. <sighs> what can you do? It's a public place. When you're ready, bring your feet back in to Wuji and make sure you're back in position. We're going to begin our little practice now that our body is nice and open and relaxed. We're going to start just by breathing in and floating the hands. As simple as this is, this is a beautiful way to calm the liver chi. It's as though the hands are atop two balloons and the wrists are really soft. And that is though they just slide over the edge of the balloon and come back down. Breathing in to come back up. Allowing the hands to slide back down. We're going to do one more round. This is a great practice, not only for the liver, but calming the nervous system and can help to release hypertension. Draw the hands up again, turn them over so they're facing out. Breathe in and stretch wide. Let the wrists be soft as we close back into center and float the hands down. And we'll just repeat this a couple of times as we draw the hands and arms up and open. We're really working the heart and the lungs, organs associated when they're in balance with passion and inspiration. When we have too much grief in our life, our lungs are very affected and we can start to literally feel like we're drowning. 
When your heart is overactive, you get too much fire in your body, too much heat can cause us to be reckless and careless. And when in balance, we feel joyful and equanimous. One more round. Float the hands up. Breathe in, open up. Pull them closed and float down. I'm going to come to holding the chi ball in front of the lower abdomen. This is your large intestine area. When you're ready, take a breath in and then we're going to breathe out and just leaving the lower half of the body where it is. We're going to turn to one side and you're going to breathe in and pull the hands up overhead. And as you turn back to center, they're going to parachute out nice and soft and gentle. And then they're going to come right back to where we started. Breathing out to turn to the side, breathing in to raise the hands up, breathing out to parachute out and float down. We'll just continue this for a while. This is tree in the wind. Again, really good for the liver. Helping to ease frustration and tension. And it's said that our greatest frustration is feeling as though we don't have what it takes to bring our dearest wish or our dreams to fruition. I'm going to do one more round to either side. You'll notice everything is really slow and soft. Life is so busy, it's really nice to take your time, really settle into each form, and feel your body relax. Up and over. When you're ready, I'm going to come back to center and we're going to bring the hands to prayer in front of the heart. This is called the Tao Archer. It's one of the many variations of this form. Again, we're going to turn and look over one shoulder. Lower half of the body stays where it is and we're going to take the forehand coming out and we're going to make an L shape with the thumb and the forefinger. Look over, stretch out, the other hand makes a fist and we're pulling open through the chest. Breathing out to release and come back to center. And when you're ready, we'll repeat on the other side. Stretching through the heart and the lungs opening up to a clear inner vision, knowing that whatever you're dreaming of has so much more potential than whatever is going on in our outer reality. I have a little mantra that I say every morning and every night. My inner vision has more potency than my outer reality. Whatever you think about is what you create. So make sure that you really create the best for yourself. It's the least selfish thing we can do. When our life is good, we create beauty and joy all around us. Bring the hands back to center. Take a breath in, raise the hands up overhead, pull them about shoulder width apart, bring them back in together, pull them down, there's a slight dip, and push the energy to the side. Come back to prayer, come back up to center, pull the arms apart gently, and draw the hands back down. Dao Yin flow. 
balancing the energies of heaven and earth. Come back down again. Open up and come up and open and through. Gathering the energy of heaven yang and drawing up the energy of earth yin. Open up. Come back to center. Draw down. Come back to center. Keep the hands in prayer and we'll step out into Mabu again. Make sure your tailbone is anchored. Knees are slightly bent. We're gonna take one foot and pivot it out to the side. Front of the body stays where it is. You're gonna lean into this heel and you're gonna pull the hands apart stretch the arms out and we're going to bend the opposite knee slide and glide and come back to center pushing out stretching the arms come back to center all down the inside of your leg you have your kidney meridian and when we stretch through we're helping to open the channels helping to nourish the batteries of the body and also your supreme essence that which makes you particularly you and no one else can be you one more round to the side as you come back in pivot on the heel Bring the hand back to center, and then we'll repeat on the other side. Stretching out, slide and glide back in. It's as though you're pushing against two panes of glass, or you're stretching between two walls. Really nice stretch for the legs and strengthening the foundations of your personal home, which is your body. One more round on this side. Always taking your time and going at your own pace. Everyone has their own inner rhythm. We're gonna pivot that foot back and come back to center. Keeping the hands where they are, we're going to push out, spread across, and open. Come back to center and bend the knees. Push out and come open again. This is called lung meridian breathing. Opening up through the heart and the lungs. We helping ourselves to draw in fresh inspiration, push past any self-imposed limitations that you may have. Open yourself up to life, all its possibilities and all of the potential that you have within you, just waiting to be expressed. Bring the hands back to center and we'll just allow them to float down. When you're ready, we'll come back into Wuji. Always check your stance and make sure that you're nice and anchored. When you're ready, we're gonna lean into the right or the left leg, depending which one you're on. And then we're just going to sweep one hand up. You'll notice my hand is lower than my shoulder and my heel on the opposite foot is raised. We're going to draw this hand into the heart. And as the hand comes down, my heel lands. And we're going to stretch up on the other side. Draw this energy into your heart and release. 
as we're coming up onto the ball of the foot, we're really helping the kidney chi, charging those batteries of the body, helping to release any sense of depression. This is a really nice practice for raising your spirit. Always take your time. What is your Tao? What is your way? How do you move? How do you flow? How do you be in this life? One more round to either side. It's so nice to be able to coordinate the whole body and it's possible for anyone. back to center. We're going to finish this little session with a little practice called yin yang palms. Everybody has yin and yang, masculine and feminine within them and this is a nice little way to bring yourself into balance. We're going to just gently draw the hands up by the side of the waist and you'll see that my hands are quite close in to the sides of my body. We're going to turn one palm over and keep the other one facing down. When you're ready, just breathe in and gently raise up the hand with the palm facing up. And then we're going to turn both palms and the hand that's raised up, we're just going to float this one down and then we'll swap. The other hand is facing up and we'll raise this hand up. We'll turn the palms over and the top hand will float down. Bottom hand raises up, both hands turn, top hand will float down and the bottom hand will float up and we turn again and release one more either side again it's just as though your hands are raising up on steam everything is really gentle and soft there's no tension within the body my mind is nice and calm and present on what i'm doing top hand will draw down, both hands will face towards the earth. Just holding your hands in this position is a really nice way of gathering chi into your palms and it'll migrate through the rest of your body. We'll let the hands come down by the sides. Take a note of how you're feeling doesn't have to be a great big extensive routine. You don't have to really get your heart rate going like crazy to benefit from movement. When you're ready, we're going to turn the palms out and this time we're going to close the gates, drawing the hands up, bringing the fingers together and pulling this beautiful energy down through your pillar of light or your temple door and really nourishing and filling yourself up with all the chi around you. For myself personally, I like to imagine as I'm gathering up, it's like all the beautiful whitewash on the waves and I'm just allowing this to pour through my whole being, cleansing, clearing and purifying me, every one of my cells being cleansed so that I'm starting my life purified, whole and fresh. Hands will come down and will rest on the lower dantian or the chi high 
You'll feel the warmth in your hands, nourishing your whole belly, all your internal organs. Just something this simple can be so profoundly nourishing. When you're ready, we'll slip the right hand down and we'll turn and we'll reach and we'll gather some of this beautiful energy that's around us. We'll bring our hand back in, draw this into the lower Dantian, and then we'll reach out from the other side and we'll draw in again, bringing this energy into the lower Dantian. Release the hands and we'll do one final gather, gathering up all the universal love that's all around us. We'll bring the hands in prayer and we'll pull this love down past our mind so that we're always thinking thoughts of love. Down to our hearts, Shen, that our spirit may be filled with love and kindness and all the way down into reverse prayer at the lower Dantian so that we always remember that our essence is pure love. Bring the hands back up to the heart in prayer and you can send this love out to whoever you feel needs it the most. Be sure to open up your arms to draw back in all the love that will come back to you tenfold. Release your hands down by your sides and we'll come back to where we started at bamboo in the wind. Always take a few moments here to end the practice. Give as much care to the ending of something as you do the beginning. Check in, how do you feel? What's going on inside you? Try not to attach a story to it, but just to notice as you would watch the clouds pass by in the sky. We raise the left hand up, palm open. This is the yin side of the body or the receiving. Think of the moon in the nighttime, darkness, mystery. We make a fist with the right hand and bring this up to meet our beautiful yin. Think of the sun, warmth, brightness, action. We draw these two together forever intertwined as one. There is no giver without a receiver and there is nothing to receive without one who gives. We bow in reverence to ourselves and all that is, the things that we understand and the things that we don't know that everything has a purpose and its place. I thank you so much for joining me for this little practice. May your chi be full of love and joy.